World's great skiers traveled many roads to the Alpine Skiing World Championships. Destination, Switzerland. From Sion, deep in the French-speaking Alps, they travel toward the sky with flawless visions of their skill. It may be a road to gold, maybe a road to nowhere. Destination, Grand Montana. clocks. Swiss chocolates and French pastry. Only the ambiance for those who want the headlines. Destination, the mountaintop. Today, the thoughts of being a world champion belong to those who work a dance floor of marbles, the downhillers. might return to earth the way they came but from a place that seems to be on top of the world the ski racer knows only one way down he has prepared his skis his muscles and his mind for their greatest day and now blended with a little luck they must all work perfectly the difference 10,000 miles makes. Becky, as you can see on the scoreboard of the finish line behind me, it has just past 11 p.m. local time as we kick off our coverage of the World Alpine Skiing Championships. Over the course of the next two weekends, we'll show you who the best in the world in, on skis are, and we'll give you a feeling just where in the Alps we are. But before we tell you about the men's downhill, which we'll have in a moment, we wanted to cover a couple of names who aren't here. Bob? Well, Bill Johnson, the Olympic champion, hurt in December, already had a knee operation and now a back operation. I talked to him a couple of days ago. He says he's feeling great. Can't wait to get skiing again. And Todd Brooker of Canada took the worst fall I've ever seen in Kitsfield last week in training. He's back in Canada. He's going to have his knee operated on next week. Make a decision then on whether he's going to ski again. I think he's going to retire. These world championships are about a week old. One set of medals has been awarded. Tamara McKinney has repeated her success of 1985 at Bormio, capturing the ladies combined with a bronze medal. Boy, in the slalom, she was great. She had the fastest run in the slalom part of the combined, but it was in the downhill she was really good. As she told us after the competition, the downhill is not exactly her best suit. I had to kind of concentrate maybe three months' worth of downhill training into the three days that we had here before the race, and finally figured it out that the, the right day. <laughs> And on to the men's downhill, which we watched about ten and a half hours ago under beautiful skies. What about the course the men faced? Oh, boy, the course was great. It was hard and icy, and I'll tell you, it was really bumpy. They took a lot of air. There's a small town about an hour from here by the name of Sasal Miguel. Only 250 people live there. Just about all of them were here today in Crom, Montana, to watch the world's best skier, Perman Zerbergen, who started his day up there. And Perman Zerbergen is on his way down this mountain in Crom, Montana. He is the best skier in the world right now. That will not be judged today. What will be judged, who is the best skier on this mountain today? He's underway in what is virtually an autobahn, Bob. Top well, it is. Uh, it's very flat, very straight, but you get going very fast, and there's some rolls in there. Now, Zerbergen is going to try to get very low on his skis. Normally, Al, starting number one is not what you want to do in a downhill, but it got very cold last night, and it's iced up a little bit. This is the same start number, though, that he had in Bormio in the World Championships in 85, which he won. Here's the Crudeir. He took pretty good air, but not bad there. You kind of have to slow down that new turn. We're going to see a lot of racers. That's a very critical turn. Air once again. We'll see them go up and down about 11 times. We see Zerbergen so often flirt on the edge of danger and pull his skis back in, pull them one way, pull them another. He's a great athlete. Well, he did that right then in that turn, just as you mentioned. He lost that outside ski and pulled it back. Of course, he's the first runner down. This is one of the... Uh, Two, they're actually up four times on the intermediate times. We're going to see those as they keep flashing up down through here. What we're seeing now is that this open stretch above tree line, four turns back and forth, a left, a right, a left, and a right. Then he's going to go into the trees coming down here. 
Here he now, coming into the trees. It starts to narrow down a little bit. The thing that's interesting, Al, about this downhill is it's just kind of one roll after the other. A lot of air. Again, right in the air. He has to stay bent over, try to keep his fist down to his boot top so he doesn't raise up. He did raise up just a little bit off that bump, as a matter of fact. The thing about this downhill is no real critical terrain except for that big turn at the top. It's just let him charge down the mountain. Oh, he took a lot of air right through there. Now we're kind of seeing kind of the gliding part of the course, a long right-hand turn. Then it's going to be into that finish shush he's going to be coming into right down here. Now he's going to almost went back on his skis through there. A lot slower speed at this part of the course than at the top, and then picking up speed right through here. And a 208.13 for Zerbergen. Four seconds faster than it was in training. Sasa Miguel, the quietest city in the Alps right now. Virtually everyone on the chartered buses that made their way here and paid $6,000 or thereabouts for tickets to watch that run. The biggest headline so far grabbed by any skier, I think, at least in terms of surprises and shockers, was Rob Boyd. 20 years old from Whistler Mountain in Canada. When he won at Val Gardena, many people who weren't there didn't believe it at all. But he likes this course. He likes to glide. Well, I'll tell you, I really like this guy, Boyd. Talking to Todd Brooker a few weeks ago before he got hurt. Brooker, by the way, of course, is watching this race back in Paris, Ontario on television. He said, I love these new Canadians. This Boyd is only 20 years old, and he just loves to go fast. And this is exactly what he does. He doesn't know what he's doing, according to Brooker, all the time. He's not very nifty in the turns, but he loves to go fast. And I like him on this downhill. If he has any kind of a good time right in this first spot here, I think he could do very well. About 78 miles an hour at that point on the course. 32 hundredths of a second behind. That's not great for him. But what he'll do down here after he gets off this bump is he'll really pour himself down this hill. The one thing you can do on this downhill, you don't have to be that good in the turns. You've just got to keep charging and carry that speed with you. It's just one bump and then a roll and then a bump and then a roll all the way down. Now we're seeing these big, long turns before they go into the trees. The course a little icier than when the downhillers last left it yesterday. And he's still about the same, 36 one-hundredths. But he's hanging right in there, and that's not bad. He can move right up in there to first, second, or third if he has a good run here. I don't think he can really have a kind of a run that can maybe take the lead from Zerbergen, but he could move into second place. Look at him hold those hands under him. Try to keep that wind from going, from going up in his face. Get it over his shoulders. Good aerodynamic style. Oh, he's moved up now into second place. Boy, I'll tell you, he's a good all-around athlete. He loves the motorcycle. He loves speed. Windsurfer. And I'll tell you, he does love downhill. Talking to him, he has no problems being over here. Hey, this is my first World Cup circuit, and I've already won a race. And he started 26 when he won that race. In and he was a hockey player. He's using that toughness, too. Still staying in second place with that intermediate time, 55 100 behind Zerbergen. A little bit off on that last buck. Coming down through now, a couple little turns through the finish line for him. Just about to come into that finish shush. Oh, he, that lost some time. He had to straighten up a little bit. He'll fit with his arms. That'll cost him a little. Rob Boyd into second place, 208.5, behind Herman Zerbergen of Switzerland. And that was a very, very good run for him. That's going to put him in very high in this race. Zerbergen, another challenger, closer to another world championship. Right now, everything for him is soft-spoken, though, except for what he says with his skis. And it's what happens on those skis that give him the problem of staying calm. Uh, this is uh, my biggest problem. It's uh, very difficult. I try to, to be alone and to concentrate. It's a big pleasure for me to ski in my country and in front of my fans and friends. In the 60 and 70 was, was uh, Kili and Klammer, the big champion, and I hope to, to be an 80, a big champion. The Haute Plateau, Ballesteros, Langer, and Stadler. Now, without all that warm sun stuff, it's my turn. This area of Switzerland known as Crans Montana is certainly the capital of the sport of skiing for these two weeks in January. 
But for the rest of the year, Crons, Montana is most famous for the sport of golf. The golf club Crons hosts the Swiss Open every year, and Jack Nicklaus is even building another nine-hole course. I couldn't help but tee one up on the 18th hole, the finishing hole for the famous Swiss Open. It's a par four. And Bernard is going to help me get on the green. Bernard, tell me about this. Is it going to play right or left? Yeah, uh, it on the left. I recommend you to send wedge. Okay. This time of year, the greens are very slow. <laughs> that could be in the hole. Bernard, bring my putter. Worrying about an entirely different course is 29-year-old Swiss veteran Peter Mueller, who for all his fame has never won a gold at an Olympic or World Championship. Bob Biatti visited him at home. This is Zurich, the largest city in Switzerland. It is mountain towns and not cities where champion ski racers usually come from, but Peter Mueller, who didn't even enter his first ski race until the advanced age of 14, has proven the exception. First, it was really hard. It was... Everybody said you can make every sport, but in ski racing, uh, it's not possible to become uh, as a flatlander as here from Zurich to, to beat uh, the guys who comes from the mountain. And then I, I think it's possible, and I had to make a harder training than the other guys, and it was possible. Peter credits his success to his grueling physical fitness program. From hurling down the toughest ski mountains in the world, he has another softer side, fishing. Here on the lake bordering on Zurich, he spends many hours in the boat he owns with his father. Earlier this fall, I had the opportunity to join him. How would you compare uh, ski racing and fishing? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a big difference. Fishing is so quiet, so relaxed. And uh, ski racing is it's my job and it's an adventure. It's, difficult to say with, with the press and with that it's very you have no no one minute free you know and when you go fishing it doesn't matter it's very relaxed it's very quiet last match Mueller raced to one of his finest world cup victories in aspen colorado what made this accomplishment so spectacular was that he wasn't even supposed to be there he broke his wrist a few weeks earlier and won in aspen racing in a cast you know, you mentioned he's never won. He was second in Sarajevo in 84, Al, and he was second in the World Championships in Bormio, Italy in 1985. Many Swiss, well, they'd like to see Mueller do well. Obviously, Zerbergen is the new hero in Switzerland, but the great Bernard Russi, 1972 Olympic downhill champion, told me the other day, he said, you know, Swiss are funny. They like their heroes, but they like them just for a little while. And a lot of Swiss already are saying, yeah, Zerbergen's great, but how about poor Mueller? It's about time for him to win. They'd like to see Mueller do well here today. I think this is a great downhill ball, particularly if he's fast off the top. And he is fast off the top. Only 12 one hundred of a second behind. Mueller gliding through the tree there. And down here on all of these turns, we say it's just one big left and a right and a left and a right with bumps all through this foot. They say you leave the air 11 different times in the downhill. This is good for Mueller. He'll pour himself down this downhill. See him just kind of ride around there. He caught a little bit of soft snow, but he didn't bite it. Got to be careful not to edge because a little bit, it'll get a little softer every time a racer goes down. He's a little slower on that second intermediate time. He's dropped to third. That's not a good sign for him because you really should be picking up momentum as you go down the course. Listen to these Swiss fans cheering on their veteran Peter Mueller. He's a city boy, grows up just outside, grew up just outside of Zurich, owns two health clubs. Conditioning, he says, is everything. And he's moved up only four one hundredths of a second behind Zerbergen. This is going to be very, very tight. Zerbergen's lead is really in jeopardy coming down to it. is not particularly happy, you know, but he's a great sportsman. He'll have his day. He's very young. But for Mueller, a lot of people are pretty happy here in Switzerland. Amazing world these racers live in. Hundredths of a second will separate the world champion from the rest of the pack. Mueller, 24-year-old Michael Mayer of Italy. He tore ligaments in Garmisch in a giant slalom three weeks ago, and here he is going for it. One, three, two, one. 
six foot five inches tall. He looks like a tight end, a football tight end. But you know, I'll tell you, he's a good downhiller. Amazing he can even be out here with that bad knee and everything because the bumps are going to put a lot of pressure when he's going to be, and also the turns right after him. If he can be good gliding, and you expect he would be with his weight on the top, he's very fast on his skis on this upper 35 seconds, then he could give it a pretty good run, though. He's a fun-loving guy. His father's a very wealthy lumberman in Italy, and... You know, he doesn't like to train very much in the summer, but when it gets down to heavy business in the winter, he seems to always be there. And he is, he did have the best time on the top. Now can we hold it on the box? How about that knee on the box? Oh, oh. no, couldn't hold it. Looked like his knee came right out from under. It's tough to say. He skis away, and his knee doesn't seem to be having any problem at all. Well, he was great off the top with the fastest time so far. Now he came down here, and right on the lip, I think he kind of missed what you'd call a pre-jump and kind of flew right through the air. Now, he is really flying. I'm sure he's thinking, hey, am I ever coming down on the ground? A lot farther than he wanted to go. He backed off a little bit. And, well, he kind of leaned into the hill a little bit, and I'm sure worrying about his knee also hurt him. But one or the other, combination of both, put him out of this race. Well, certainly unfortunate. Mayer was building some 80-mile-per-hour drama of his own, only to have that crash. Now, he has continued down the mountain and will get a finishing time in this race. But as far as capturing the lead, forget it. That challenge right now will be held by Carl Alperger of Switzerland, a teammate of Peter Mueller's, celebrating a little bit of a comeback. He fell two years ago and hasn't been that strong since. There's a story that Alperger and Mueller used to be great friends until Alperger started skiing better recently, and they've had a bit of, uh, of a parting of the ways. <laughs> amazing how it works, isn't it? It's also pretty amazing when you realize there are three Swiss, first, second, and third, in the bottom of the mountain, and here comes Alperger, who really could win this race. You know, these nations train all year round, and it's really, it's hard to realize how much the Swiss are dominating right now. time incredibly fast that's actually in comparison to the time of michael mayer so of the skiers alive in this race albuquerque's time is the fastest well albuquerque is going to put a lot of pressure on his teammates and anybody else that's yet to come he's really flying down this mountain he is a good downhiller also we might note that at the bottom of the mountain there's some money waiting in the paper the other day it says that the swiss ski federation is putting up 40,000 swiss francs or a little more than twenty-five thousand dollars to the winner also, the manufacturers that these racers compete for, they all have bonus money. Skis, boots, and bindings. A lot of money down there. Absolutely. And Alpiger's time staying right there at one-tenth. We should point out also that that money goes into a special trust fund so that technically these skiers can remain amateurs. Here comes the next critical split time for Carl Alpiger. Has he stayed within reach? Well, he stayed within reach. He's all about three-tenths of a second behind. He's going to really have to pour it on down here. Keeping in mind that Mueller has a little bit more weight, and I thought Mueller was really carrying his speed well down here. Look at how low he's getting on his skis. He's really looking for speed. He was quick, quick, quick at the top, then lost a little speed at the bottom, or he could have even been better than his time right now. But still, he is visibly very, very happy. Four of the top five are Swiss. The domination continues. And Heinzer is in fourth, and that could be three straight world championships in fourth place. During our trip here to Switzerland, we've confirmed some of our most popular beliefs. The Swiss do enjoy chocolate, and for the most part wear watches, and if they're lucky, have Swiss bank accounts. But there's one other thing that's bothering me, so let's investigate. Gentlemen, are you with the Swiss Army? Yes. 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 Do you have a Swiss Army knife? No. Uh-oh. Do you have a Swiss Army knife? Yes, of course. Oh, good. Can I see it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. The official Swiss Army knife, just like you'd expect, with the little flag of Switzerland right there on it. Now, shouldn't he have a, a Swiss Army knife? He should. Soldier, you are out of uniform. Oh, what the farmer. Here in the world a year ago, the overall World Cup champion, 22-year-old Mark Giardelli, is currently on the course as the World Alpine Skiing Championships move along in Switzerland. And he wasn't that strong up on the upper part of the course, seventh position right now. But it's really a miracle he's even in this competition because four times this winter he's dislocated his shoulder. The last time, two days ago, windmilling going off above. Just popped right out of there. Giardelli's time even a little bit slower. 
And Girardelli is an Austrian, but he skis for Luxembourg. His father and Girardelli himself didn't like the way things were going on the Austrian team, didn't like the philosophy. So they found a country. And that country, Luxembourg. No problem. Just get another country. Girardelli will not figure in the medal standings in this downhill, but you can bet next weekend when it comes down to the slalom report, his name will be in it. A courageous seventh place, though. So Mueller will finally get his gold medal. One of the top journalists in all of skiing has worked for us behind the scenes at ABC for a long time. His name is Patrick Lang, and he's down with Peter Mueller. Peter Mueller, I can imagine the kind of dream today you realize in winning this gold medal. I'm so happy. It's fantastic. How was your run? Uh, I'm a very good run in the top, but we there jump. I was jumping so high and so long. And first, uh, I think now, now I... Uh, I fell, I, I'm down and I could stand it and then I take a short line and I was jumping so long in other jumps and uh, it was very difficult but uh, I, I could take the, the right line down and I could win this race. So. so it was the Swiss all the way. Five of the top six finishers, a great finisher for the Canadian Rob Boyd. Remember Michael Mayer, the Italian who fell? He finished 19th. The best American finish was Michael Brown. He finished 21st. That sends the huge cowbells of the Swiss fans out into the streets of Cra Montana to celebrate as they march down from the mountain. A reminder that tomorrow at halftime of the Pro Bowl, we'll have a report on the women's downhill here at the World Alpine Skiing Championships. Today, the story was Peter Mueller, world champion.